Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you along to my kitchen where I do a review on the Food Saver Vacuum Sealing System. So come along and let's get to the kitchen right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So this is the Food Saver, the model 4840. It's a hefty machine and it runs about $200 or so. I got it on sale because this is actually a refurbished model. So I paid, I think, $120. Um, but it has a couple of great features. It has the accessory port where you can uh, vacuum seal the um, vacuum bags with the um, Ziploc style and also you can uh, detach it and use it for zip or vacuum sealing jars and I'll show you both of those in a little bit. It has where you can select between dry and moist which is really good if you're doing uh, moist things like meat or soups or things like that. Uh, and then um, it has, of course, where you can just seal if you're not vacuuming, which works great if you're like resealing potato chips or things like that. Or when you make your custom size bags, it's very important. And then it has the progress light here. And it also has the tray full indicator here. And this tray is when it, uh, for the juices and things from when you're doing moist products. It has a compartment here that you can store your rolls of food saver bags and uh, it works really well. It's got its own little cutter system so I really like that. Um, I buy uh, an off-brand uh, roll and I will leave a link in the description box below and this I think this uh, container fits approximately 20 feet of food saver bag uh, roll here and most of the refills you get are about 50 at which is a better value so you actually have to re-roll onto an old cardboard to get it to fit in here um, otherwise this works pretty good and then down here is the vacuum sealing uh, area and it just pops open like this and then you just simply pop that out and remove it and then clean it out and pop it back in. So the one thing I do not like about this system, I'll be straight up, uh, there's a lot of people who like to make their own size bags or use different ways to make uh, bags, bags without um, buying the uh, food saver vacuum bag styles. Um, and in order to do that you have to be able to lift open the machine and put it back down where the vacuum seal chamber and things goes. You can't do this with that. Um, this does not open and close that way. It only opens and shuts this way. And so if you're trying to put a special bag in here or whatever and then try to close this, um, it's going to lose that spot where you had that in there. So this always has to stay closed and so you can't uh, open and close as in some of those little tricks on how to make your own vacuum bags. You'll see I have this setting on a towel. Um, it's simply because um, my son is very sensitive to the vibrations of this machine and so I use it on a towel to help minimize the vibrations. So give me a minute, I'll set the camera up and I will show you how this machine works. So with this food pit saver, when I bought it, it did come with some sample um, items to get you started so you can see what you like and how to work with it. It came with these food saver Ziploc style bags, 
which uh, is kind of great because you can reuse these instead of uh, sealing them and then once you open them you have to throw them away. However, I found when I do use these, these don't hold a seal. But let me show you how this is supposed to work. So I'm going to take a bag of corn here. Corn tends to get freezer burn real easy even when it's in these bags. So what I simply do is I'm going to make a cut in one of these corners here just so we can get the air that's in this bag out. We're going to put it in here. Okay. And then I'm going to turn my food saver on. And attach my accessory here. And then we're going to turn on our accessory and we're going to put it over the hole that's in the bag here and it should suck all the air out of this. nice and tight and then when you're ready to use it you can simply open the ziplock part take your item out and be able to reuse the bag that's what's supposed to be able to happen so it's supposed to save you money however I have found that they do not hold the seal I ziplocked or I uh, sealed this bag of uh, strawberries and this one of mixed fruit and you can see there's a lot of air in here again the seal is still fine up here this hasn't come apart but uh, air has seeped back into this bag and same with this one it's there's air in here so um, personally I would not use these bags I will show you one bag that did work though this is a bag of shredded cheese that I did for the same reason because it could be uh, opened and then this bag can be reused when I was done. I did this about oh, a week or two ago and I thought it was alright but now I'm starting to see the air in it. You see that? See the air? How oh, it's not tight here anymore? So these these particular bags do not hold a seal and keep that air out so I would not recommend using these types of bags however I have found that the regular seal style bags these ones which are basically one-time use only or if you start out larger than you need to you can wash them cut them down a little bit and reseal them um, but yes yeah, these ones hold a seal very very good this is a package of beans that I did about a month ago. And you can see that this is still very, very airtight. There's no release of the seal at all. Very, very good quality product. And that, my friends, was not a Food Saver brand bag. It was a refill from food vac bag I got this on Amazon and I will leave a link in the description box below this was two uh, bags or uh, two rolls here 11 by 50 foot rolls and I think I spent 20 or 25 dollars on two rolls of the 11 by 50 where I think with the name brand you're spending that for just one roll or uh, I will leave a link in the description box below for this guy and it holds out really really well so I already have this bag here that I had made but I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a bag on the system I forgot to uh, uh, re 
roll my accessory. I'll show you how to do that. You simply give it a gentle tug and it automatically retracts into the system, like so. We will use the jar sealing portion and I will show you how to do that with this jar of um, coffee beans in a minute. So to make your own bags, very simple. You have your bags go underneath this slider here and you just pull it out to whatever desired size you'd like. This size works pretty well so I'm just going to mash up the two, pull it out, and then you hold down the bar and slice like so. And there you go. Now you have two unsealed ends, so you have to seal one of the ends. So you simply press the seal button and stick one of your ends into the opening down here. And then it will seal and you'll see the progress light here. Okay, so it did not show progress for the seal, but I will show you what it does show. If I try to seal this too quickly before the last seal, okay. See how it blinked like that? That's letting you know that the heating element is too hot and it needs some time to cool down. It's a safety feature with this model that I really like. So there's my bag and there's the seal on it. Really good seal. So we're going to take our corn again. I'm going to put it in there. And yes, the bag is a little too big for the corn, but again, I want to be able to reuse this later, so I'm doing it as a larger size to begin with. So we're just gonna slide this in here again, and it's gonna do the rest for you. It's automatic. Notice how I lifted up on that? It was to make sure that it has uh, the ability to draw all the air out and it's just really easy to do and to make sure you get a very good vacuum seal. You notice the sound changed in pitch as it went through and the progress light and then eventually it let go. Now this is completely sealed and ready to go in the freezer. So vacuum sealing jars. That is a big thing nowadays because a lot of people are using the glass jars to store dried goods and um, you want to be able to get as much as the air out and seal it as possible so your dried goods stay fresher longer. This works very good for long term storage of your dry goods. I would not recommend trying to do wet goods in this for long term. But if you had like soup or something that you wanted to keep in a glass jar and keep it in your fridge, that will work too. You just have to uh, watch on how much you're vacuuming out in order to not suck all your uh, liquid out of your soups. But I'm going to show you how I vacuum seal a jar. So I had bought the vacuum sealer jar accessory kit. Um, I think last year or the year before I got these on Amazon and they come in two sizes. These are the wide mouth and the narrow mouth. I don't use the narrow mouth because I hardly ever use narrow mouth jars. They just don't work for me. But um, yeah, so it comes with those and it also comes with um, your attachments, uh, your hose for your machine. If your machine did not have one of its own, um, there's other machines that have an accessory port that you can plug this in. A backup system that I use in case I don't have electricity is a brake bleeder. And it works the same way as the vacuum sealer for vacuuming, it's just hand powered. And let me tell you, after doing about two jars, you're about done doing these manually. So while we have electricity, um, I do use the vacuum sealer system now, but this is a great uh, option to use uh, if you don't have electricity or you're living off grid. Um, great, great thing to use. I learned this trick from uh, Heidi on Rain Country, 
and I will link to that video above so you can watch that. Uh, she has awesome different ways of doing off-grid stuff including jar sealing with a brake bleeder. Okay so for the jars it's very simple. I just have my jar filled up to the top. You can do this with slightly emptier jars but the more you have in here the less the machine has to work because the less air is actually in this container to begin with. So you take your lid and I reuse my canning lids from when I have uh, like water baths or pressure canned uh, my veggies and beans. These work just fine for dry storage vacuum sealing. So go ahead and reuse your lids, especially now with the lid shortage. Very important to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So you simply put your lid on take your uh, food saver jar attachment, put that right on over there. See how that's on. Then we're going to take our accessory port and this comes apart. This part is for using those bags like I showed you, but then if you gently pop this off, there we go, it has the port for your jars. So we're going to insert the port into our lid here, make sure it's in there good, and then we're going to press our accessory button and listen to the tone of the machine. Notice how it shut itself off and the progress light went all the way over. It did not go to red because it does not actually seal with the uh, element down below. But um, this is sealed. So we're going to gently pop this off. Put it back together so I don't lose it. Okay. And then we're going to gently pop this off. And there you go nice and sealed and then I simply just put the lid gently back on it I don't screw it very tight but just a little bit <clears throat> in case the seal does break off and you go to move this you don't want to lose your contents so I always put this back on just as a safety measure but so far after doing about 30 jars I have not had a single one of these lose their seal so that is my review of the food saver. Again, this is the 4840 model. I got this on Amazon. I've used this for about a month, month and a half now, and I'm very impressed for the most part with this model. Like I said, the only um, drawbacks is that this unit, you cannot open it and close it to expose the heat sealing system. And notice this shows you that uh, there's an error because I opened this back up. Um, but it works very, very well. I hope this review was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. And share this with others who may be looking into doing some vacuum sealing as other ways to preserve their food. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be updating with some more reviews, gardening videos, and others. So if you want to follow me on my journey, please subscribe. And as always, I hope wherever you are, you are extremely blessed. Bye-bye, everybody.